What's going on you guys, Sam Burr here and welcome back to my channel. Now, in today's video I wanted to go over several tips for making your city look realistic. I did make a similar video over a year ago which helped a lot of you, however I am starting to get more people asking me again about how to make uh, realistic cities. So we're going to cover some of those tips from the previous video, but also we're going to add in a whole bunch of new tips as well. It is going to be a mixture of realistic mods and also some city planning, but if there are any other tips I don't mention, feel free to comment them all down below. The first tip is the ultimate eye candy mod. Basically, it allows you to adjust the latitude and longitude to a more realistic image. So for comparison, this is the standard in-game look. And then this is how it looks after I've adjusted the lighting. And for reference, you can adjust the mod to the settings if you'd like to have a similar look to mine, or you can adjust it to how you want it. Following the landscape is another great tip to keep in mind. I know it's easy to create a grid city and try to make everything symmetrical, but I do find cities that have a more natural road design look a bit more appealing. So if you look at this example here, you can see I've followed the shape of the shoreline and then all of the streets behind that follow the same curvy road design. You can also try following the sides of the hills and mountains. So instead of doing one steep road going up the mountain, you might want to try more curvy lines that follow the shape of the hill and slowly work their way up. Of course, avoiding cliff and really steep areas. You might also want to try building around or following the shape of the side of a forest area. Instead of bulldozing and putting a road straight through it, it just creates a nice realistic looking road. The next one is adjusting the clouds using the cloud and fog toggle mod. Of course, all of these are linked down below. Um, I find generally the in-game cloud settings create a bit of a kind of fuzzy, unclear look, if that makes sense. So once you're in the mod, you can adjust it to the settings. So for example, this is the before adjusting the settings, and then this is after. And in my opinion, it looks so much clearer that way. In terms of pollution, I like to remove that unusual ground color caused by industrial areas. So I do that via the no radioactive desert and more mod. Um, I also use this mod to remove the that dead tree look which is found in the industrial areas and also along the shorelines. You can adjust the mod like this to remove those issues and really it just makes such a huge difference by changing these little preferences. Next, let's talk about building heights. So obviously cities generally don't have, for example, a really high skyscraper and then right next to it is a one story building. So you want to try layering buildings. Think of it like stairs. At the top of the stairs, you have the highest buildings. And then as you go down the stairs, you keep going down and down, step by step by step. And eventually you get down to your one story houses. So you can see right here how I've done it. You start with the highest buildings and slowly work your way down to the very lowest buildings. It looks really great like that. Surface Painter is another great mod to use. It's common to find those awkward spaces throughout your city where the cement doesn't quite attach, for example, like this. In these cases, I like to put down the cement in those spaces, but you can also use this mod to add extra green grass, or you've got these other colors here if you need. The next tip might seem a little bit odd, but I do recommend using the no seagull mod simply because the amount of seagulls that can spawn in your game looks really unrealistic and it's kind of an eyesore. So let's get rid of the birdies. Okay, now let's talk about building clusters. It's always a good idea to spread out your commercial office and industrial spaces. So instead of having a big commercial area in the downtown, you might want to have smaller clusters throughout your city. For example, if you have a main road 
going through a suburb, you might want to add a cluster of shops and offices along that road. Also, if you have a road or intersection which you know is going to be busy and loud, that's probably a good location for shops as you can't really put residential zones in that area due to the noise pollution. And even if you have a smaller road that isn't very busy, it's still great to add some shops and offices onto that intersection. By doing all of this, it helps spread out your sims and makes different zones more accessible instead of making them all have to go into the downtown area. Adding tides to your game can also add an extra layer of realism. Basically, all this mod does is makes the sea level rise and fall, which is a pretty normal thing in the world. You can set the range and speed of the tide in the option menu, however, I do definitely recommend testing out this mod on a blank map first, as it's really easy to flood your city or mess up your sea level, but once you've worked it out, it's a pretty nice addition to your map. Next is the intersection marking tool. I find it a bit unrealistic and kind of annoying when we have those intersections that look like this that are really blank. But through this tool we can add in extra lines, whether it's a dash line, single line, double line. And I find it makes the intersection look a bit more complete instead of just being blank and it really helps outline the lanes and where cars will travel through the intersection. It is a bit of a tricky mod, but you can find several tutorials about this tool on YouTube, but you will definitely need the TMPE mod to get this up and running. The next tip is about making your city come alive. So instead of always looking at the city from a zoomed out perspective, what about when you zoom in? For me, a city is really alive when I see all of my sims wandering around, walking, cycling, visiting parks, waiting for public transport. It really makes the city more engaging, if you know what I mean. Even just seeing cars using parking lots and parking on the sides of the roads. So you can easily do this by encouraging more walkability and cycling and reducing the amount of cars in certain areas and even just putting pathways here and there and making pedestrian bridges. Overall just make it more pedestrian friendly, it makes the city look more lively. Another tip is in regards to road hierarchy. For most of us, it is kind of a self-explanatory method, but I'm still going to mention it anyway. Obviously, for busier areas, you'd want to have larger roads with more lanes, and for those quieter areas, you need kind of the bare minimum smaller roads. So if you have a really big road with hardly any traffic on it, that's going to look a little, little bit funny, right? But if you have a really small road with a lot of traffic, then maybe you're not doing the right thing either, and it might be time to upgrade that one. So you need to make sure you get the right balance. Of course, every city is different in terms of size, scale, etc. So you need to find which best, which road best suits your traffic in your city, but just keep in mind the whole general idea of road hierarchy. If you'd like to have a bit more structure to your city and liven it up a little bit more, you can try the real-time mod. This basically creates a realistic work home balance for your sims. So in the morning your sims will get up and they'll travel to work and school and then in the afternoon or evenings they will slowly make their way back home. Which means during the nights there won't be as much traffic and then during peak hour there will actually be a lot of traffic. You can adjust all of these times to your liking but I should mention this can be a little bit challenging, especially during those peak traffic congestion times. So good luck with that one. Speaking of livening up your city, I like to place down people generators in areas where you'd expect people to gather. For example, you can place them around shops, monuments, parks, or even at beaches. And Lucky Last is just all about detailing and filling in those awkward spaces. For me, I, I generally put a lot of vegetation, pathways, maybe some seats and planters, especially in those areas that aren't really suitable for putting buildings and are a little bit awkward. 
even if you even if you just add in some extra tables and chairs next to commercial areas makes a huge difference so it's all of these tiny details that really make your city truly come to life and makes me feel good seeing all the sims walking around their parks using the pathways and tables that i put down and as a bonus tip this was the bonus tip in the previous video as well but it's definitely worth mentioning don't over plan your city of course you can still have an idea or a rough plan but i find cities look the best when they develop naturally where it grows over time meeting the different demands and needs of the city where you slowly got to upgrade road systems public transport systems and things like that so just go with the flow with your city let it grow literally over time and um, it's going to look a lot better Anyway, that's all from me. Of course, there's going to be many more tips for helping to make your city look more realistic, but I do hope these tips have helped. And like I said before, you're more than welcome to comment any other tips down below.